How many waves is this? Not a half, three fourths, three fourths. Which harmonic is this? It's not the second, third, yes. Three, that numerator right there, it's three times the first one. This is the third harmonic. Even harmonics don't exist here. Uh, next harmonic, let's see. What did you just did? You just said evens don't exist. So L is equal to five quarters of a lambda, or a lambda is equal to 0.8L. For the decimal fans over here, the wavelength would be 1.3 repeating. Of Now, if you look at some of my old tests, uh, I got confused in my language early on and got well, sort of stuck in a rut. If you, if you see the one fixed, one free end, and I make a reference to the second harmonic, I'm referring to this one right here. Uh, at some point, the language changed, so I did it correctly and called it the third harmonic. However, you might find in some old tests where I call it the, the second harmonic. Just meaning the second harmonic in the it, yeah. Now, to avoid some of that confusion, they did come up with other language here, where this is still the first harmonic, and this is also known as the first overtone, and the second overtone, and I'm sure you can figure out what the seventh harmonic is called. The third overtone. That's right. Over here, first overtone, second overtone, third overtone. So each... Um, different thing is an overtone. Yeah. yeah. Questions here? Are there... This might be a bit detailed question. Are there, like, we're going by like one-fourth to three-fourths. Are there other waves that like stop in between? When we're in this situation? No and yes. Uh, Five eighths. If. I don't know whether yet yeah, I'll do this as a class demonstration or whether you'll do it as a lab, but there's the. There used to be one in here over there. It was a long tube. It's getting to look like a very long graduated cylinder. Okay. You send sound waves down into it, it bounces against water and then reflects back. The water would represent the fixed end, the open mouth of the tube would represent the free end. When you hit an overtone, it'll sound louder because you have an anti-node here and the anti-node just get the biggest swings and what your eardrum picks up as the loudest is the thing that's gonna knock your eardrum in and pull it out the most. There are some false harmonics in there so that if you went down, there's going to be a point where it gets a little bit louder than a little bit softer. And then when you hit the actual harmonic, it gets louder than those other ones. The, the other ones are something in between and I haven't quite figured out exactly what causes those. Okay. So officially, no, in reality, there's something there. It's sort of a nuisance lab in the fact that if you've got, let's say, three different groups doing the lab, all listening for that point where it gets louder, uh, I get, maybe students have less of an issue with it than I do, but I'll hear a sound get really loud and it turns out it's someone across the room and not the one I'm trying to listen for. That's No. Tomorrow's lab is going to be more dealing with that stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, I guess I haven't posted it yet. So there. You're going to be surprised. Is it the one that you had us set up in here? The two poles and the string, and you have the thing that rotated or whatever? Vibrated up and down? Yeah. Yeah. No. So I've done that demonstration? 
No, it was just in here and you turned it on. Ah, okay. Yeah, it would be that one. All right, so now let's take a look at two free ends and then actually look at an application of it. All right, with two free ends, what will the ends be? Nodes or anti nodes? Nodes or anti nodes. All right, the simplest one we can do, well, I've got an anti node there, and an anti node there. How many waves? One. No, I want to say one eighth. That's what I want. You want to say one what? Eight. One eighth? Yeah, I was just going with the one fourth and just make it. Well, possible. if that's a quarter of one. So it's a half a wave? Yeah, it's half a wave. From the looking at the you know the classic full wave. Basically going yeah. from there to there. Cutting off those pesky ends. Alright, so L is equal to a half of a wave. That's the first harmonic. Next harmonic, how many waves are we going to add to get to the next harmonic? Yep. And how many waves is this then? One. Yep. Matter of fact, the math here is identical to two fixed ends, uh, just the, it looks different. And so the next harmonic. Oops, I think I went too far there. There we go. This starts to look more and more like a DNA spiral. Yeah. Now recognize that when we're doing this, that we are not saying that the string is in both places at once. What we're saying is that it is swinging back and forth. Is there a question there? Yeah, I don't get how we're going from that being one half to that being one. All right, so if I take, that's a sine wave. Have you had three? Um, yeah. All right, so you've dealt, you're familiar with sine and cosine waves? Yes. That's just a cosine wave on its side. Oh, okay. Does that mean we'll have to use trig functions to do a lot of these problems? At some point, yes. <laughs> Don't worry, it's it's you can use a calculator for convincing. We need some muscles now. The difference between the trig that we'll be doing here and the trig that we did before is uh, you'll need to, I recommend that you're ingredients for this stuff. For these trig functions, are there angles involved? Not in the same way as before. Okay. Oh, it would just be the period. So if yeah, the, it, we'll get there. So if the end is one, if the ends are one fourth and the middle is one half, then yes, I get it. This is not drawn properly. Got it. So properly, this middle back section should be half of the overall. Yeah. What are the chances? Uh, that's closer. It's a wrapped candy. All right. So if we had a device with two free ends, we could perhaps demonstrate this. And just so happens, there's a device here with two free ends. So, given the harmonics here, can we predict that frequency? Yes. Somewhat within the margin of typical physics experiment errors. All right, so let's start out with L. We need to figure out the length. 
Now, L will change slightly as I spin it, when I spin it faster, it'll stretch out just a little bit. So I'm just gonna stretch it out slightly to come up with an average value for L or a generic value for L. But I'm gonna pretend that it is precise. So I want it straight. And that is at 84 and a half centimeters. So L, 84 and a half centimeters, but because we're cool, 0.845 meters. So the first harmonic, what will be the wavelength for the first harmonic? Times four, eight, four, so 1.68 uh, to 1.690 meters. So for the first harmonic, it should be 1.690 meters. Here's, here's doing the point eight four five times two. Yes. Uh, the wavelength is still going to be a length. It is a distance. Okay. So the wavelength will be about like, about like that. As in, there's going to be, a, say, a peak here, a trough here, a peak there. So what we're finding out is what sound what frequency it will make. All right. Uh, we'll close that and if it doesn't pop back up. And how fast were you spinning it? You want a number associated with that? I was assuming for a good point of frequency. No. No, that, that's not determining the frequency. All right, now to find the predictive frequency, I know that the speed of the wave, of sound wave, is equal to the frequency times the wavelength, or wavelength times frequency, depending upon your mood. I know roughly the speed of sound. It is not a set number like the speed of light is, but the speed of sound is about 340 meters a second. It is temperature dependent and medium dependent, so in air, about 340 meters a second equals the frequency times 1.690 meters. So therefore, we can calculate the frequency which someone will share with us. Um, for test quizzes, etc., will we use 340 meters as the speed of sound? Uh, or yes, or unless otherwise implied or stated. If I give you a temperature and then ask you what's the speed of sound, I expect you to plug into the temperature formula. That would obviously know. Which would be given to you. Uh, exposure one point four eight three six six. Say it again with enthusiasm. Exposure one point one eight three six six. With one point one eight three units. Per seconds. Per seconds. All right. So let's see what that sounds like. Assuming I get volume here. So 201.183. Okay, no sound there. And that's on. Let's do that. go through this every single time. Alright, 
This says the sound's on. That says that I have volume. What if I do that? If I do that. There is a plan B. I don't care for it as much, but there's a plan B. He's just gonna he's gonna start making it sound. I'm so glad they upgraded these. I assume that thing. Yeah, I assume. At least that's where it used to be. I don't suppose it's here. Is there a volume button anywhere? Starting source is the favorite one. Wow. Oh, that's just an on off. Oh. It was off. Or it was off. Okay. It's definitely producing a sound. All right, plan B. The reason why I don't care for this as much as this only does whole numbers, it doesn't do the fractional frequencies. Is that a lab quest? Yep. Lab quest app is starting up. That's all. Uh, Audio function generator. There we go. So this was 201. This is the best I can do here. Oh, maybe this does do fractions. Let's find out. This is not the first harmonic. Did I talk about the air pressure bit? No. no. All right. So as I'm swinging this around, this end is traveling faster than this end. When this is traveling faster, it creates a lower pressure of on the the air is at a lower pressure here than it is down here, which sucks up air through it. And you need air go to go through it in order to be able to generate a sound. To get the first harmonic, you swing this thing, you swing it basically too slowly for there enough be enough of a pressure difference for the air to go through it. So that's why you don't hear the first harmonic. So, second harmonic. I'll call that F1 and F2. What is the frequency of the second harmonic? Uh, 0. 0.845. That would be the that would be the free uh, wavelength. Four hundred two point three six six eight six three. Just 
of all of oh, hertz. Um, and it is just twice that. It's not going to double every time. Okay. All right. So this should be closer to 402 hertz. And I assume all of us can recognize that is 402 hertz exactly. Let's see what 402 sounds like on the lab quest. And of course, if it doesn't sound perfect, then we all fail. there must be something wrong with this. Or we all fail. All right, now you definitely get a different tone uh, or timbre because that's an electronic thing. That one works better, but that's an electronic thing and this is not electronic. So the question is, how can we actually tell if this is 402 or not? Well, some people have an app on their phone that would measure that, or we play them at the same time, or not. Uh, let's put the volume down so it doesn't drown out. We're not hitting it too much. The question is, are you getting an extra sort of a trill there? like without both at the same time. And then at the same time. It's worked better before. What I'm expecting is the beat frequency, so just to, in case you've forgotten. Here's 440. to say. <laughs> That's 440 playing. Mm. That was four, let's do 402 and 403 on this. 